Welcome back to the Mate and Flamingo Tribute, part two in this series of making my first guitar project. I had to install the pick guard, neck and bridge to test that everything was correctly aligned and that the body was ready for sanding and finishing. And I also had a bit of a play of it. I did not film the drilling of the bridge mount holes, but I didn't do it much differently to the practice build, because my father's drill press could not reach far enough into the body as required. This is just a sneak preview at my full length debut I call Sanding the Movie, coming at you in full television ratio of 4 is to 3 that will also be uploaded at some point, coming soon. This is just a lot more of me sanding the body, first with coarse sandpaper to remove any burn marks left by the routing and any pencil marks left on the body. I actually purchased ebony grain filler by mistake, so I used the wood stain that I would use later to colour the body, red acrylic paint, and some water to try lightening the colour from black towards red. I also added some wood dust into the mix to help it fill some of the grain. I've seen some wood filling videos to get some basic tips, but here I was winging it and trying a few things that I thought would get it done. I didn't want a maroon coloured guitar, but this is the colour that the mix came out to and I knew it would only be seen as part of the grain, if at all. After pushing it into the grain for a while using a brush and scraper, as per the tips I picked up from the videos I had seen, I began wiping it away. But I realised I should let it sit and dry so it could dry in the grain. I can only hope that some of it stayed in the grain after sanding. I get the feeling that I sanded back past any grain filling that was achieved, and this was possibly a redundant process. Anyone who knows about grain filling would know if what I did here was effective or not. After running the electric sander over the body, I used the sanding technique I learnt in high school to sand rounded edges. It would keep them round and remove any flat areas on the edge that the sander might have left. 
Usually you would use a cloth based sanding product, but this was a strip of wet sanding paper. I felt that it was strong enough for what I needed to do and it did not tear at all. If you look at the grain now, you might see some difference than what was there before the grain filling. Personally, I still doubt that the look had any difference than before I did the grain filling. I went to the hardware store and asked about wood stains, and the guy in the shop worked with me to reach this colour of stain. I was aiming for more of a pastel red, but I think we added too much black to it to return to a true red colour. I wanted it to really pop red, but you could debate that this is a little bit brown and not so convincing as a red. In the end, I have accepted how it turned out. In the beginning, I wanted this just to be a red guitar like the practice run, but after seeing the grain of the wood, I thought about staining it as red as I could and allowing the grain to be visible. After the first round of stain, I felt the colour was weak and I was advised that if you repeat the process, the colour would become richer each time. I had a timer that I'd set on my phone for 5 minutes before I would wipe it down and then begin another round. You can hear these alarms going off in the background audio. I didn't want to lose any more stain down the bridge socket hole, so I plugged up the holes with paper towel. After two rounds of staining, the colour looked okay, but I was worried about fading when it dried or when it aged. I was also not keen on the lighter stripe in the grain down the centre of the guitar, so the further coats really helped to blend this out.
After rounds three and four, the stain was doing its job and it evened out the difference. Only if you knew to look for it would you notice that there was a lighter stripe down the centre of the body. At this point I felt that it was stained enough, so I hung it up and would determine if further coats were required after it dried. The next day I took to it with a bit of sandpaper because in the videos I had seen they advised that some of the grain may have risen up from being wet. But as soon as I saw how much colour was being taken off, I stopped. I realised that one of the areas on the edge inside the lower horn that had lost a lot of colour did not stain well again. If the staining process caused any slight unevenness, I was going to clear coat anyway. So any unevenness in the grain would be covered up by the layers of clear regardless. You are about to witness a big lesson that I'd learned. Right here I am making a big mistake and if you can notice the tip of the air gun, it is set for a horizontal fan and I was passing horizontally. I still wasn't really sure how the layering process should go. I was wondering why I was getting such a thin fan and the passes were not meeting up and shortly when I have a good look at the back I realise how bad it is and decide to make a correction. I sped this first session up because a fail looks funnier this way.
To fix the terrible flood of runs that was occurring, I thought I would give it a blow with the gun and flatten them out and slow them down. Then I thought I could flood it more and lay the surface flat and let the runs flatten themselves out. But because it started to look horrible and unmanageable, I gave up and wiped it all off and started again. After that, I just laid enough clear coat down that would be thick enough to wet sand flat in preparation for further coats on the next session. I twisted the cap horizontal again to spray vertical lines but set it back immediately and become way more mindful of that setting from now on. I was spraying the practice build at the same time because they were both ready for it at the same time. I have cut the video down to the respective guitar builds I was doing. To see the red guitar being sprayed, go and watch the Mate and Flamingo Tribute Practice Build series. Different shirt, different day, different sides. This was the second run of clear coating. I wet sanded the body flat except for where there were a few low areas, as I knew there would be more layers to come and did not want to risk cutting through to the stain in case it discoloured the area. These horns were really easy to hit with the spray. I have found that they are easier to hit than Stratocaster horns. This pole rig that I have set up to be able to move the guitar around without touching it is a stroke of genius on my part. However, for a Strat body, getting into the horns is a bit more of a challenge. If the poles were longer, it might help me hit the inside of Strat horns easier, but it would cause balancing issues with the stand I am using. The stand I am using is normally for holding a PA speaker. By this session on the 7th of May, I had enough of runs and decided on a new process for laying down paint and clear coat. I lay down two passes of extremely thin coats, 
and then I wait 15 minutes for the coat to become tacky and firm up a little bit before heating it again with a further two passes. I find this is the best method to avoid runs and not lay down too much wet material at once. I was following this process during the second session on the 7th of May 2017. Just eyeballing the current state here to make sure that there were no runs forming and or that the layers were even.
What I'm doing there is just adding more material to a section where I had a few issues with a few runs from the catastrophe in the first session. I have learnt that the best way to deal with a run is not to have a run at all in the first place.
I was aiming for quite a thick coat of poly on this project, mainly because I did not want to run into any major issues when wet sanding or buffing in the final stages of this project. This is not the end of the session as it continues in part 3. See you again in part 3.